Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for uh, Wednesday, December the 21st. Big Wednesday slate tonight, 11 game slate guys. So um, usually on these bigger slates, I do try and go quick. We're going to do a quick game by game breakdown of each you know, one of these 11 games. Give you guys my thoughts on the slate, what I do like taking a first look on Tuesday night. But before we do get started with the breakdown, as always, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, check out the sponsor of the video, Price Picks. So uh, Price Picks is a player prop based DFS site. Uh, very simple and easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, you can see they have some projections posted for Wednesday's games. Obviously, there's not really much up right now. I'm making this video on Tuesday night. Um, but, you know, check the board again on Wednesday sometime, you know, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. You'll see a lot of projections posted for basically every game for almost, you know, pretty much every player, you know, every starter. Um, and you see if there's any props you like, you know, points, rebounds, assists, uh, points, rebounds, assists added together, three-pointers made. Like, they have a ton of different categories you can look through. You just take more or less. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks. And you can potentially win up to 25x your money on prize picks. Um, so if you guys are not playing over there yet, get signed up with promo code NOAH. Uh, when you do sign up with my promo code PRIZEPICS, they will match your first deposit up to $100. Um, and as always, I should have a uh, prize picks video posted for today. Probably will go up sometime on Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. So definitely uh, check the channel out then if you guys are playing on prize picks and you want to know some picks that I like for today. But let's go ahead and talk through this big Wednesday slate. And we'll start off with the first game of the night, the Bucks and the Cavs. So this should be a you know really fun game to watch, but I don't know if this is a game that for DFS I really want to be targeting too heavily. On the Milwaukee side, uh, Chris Middleton is doubtful for today, so he is not expected to play. You know, with Middleton doubtful, we can expect a really big role for both Giannis and Drew. But this is not the best matchup against Cleveland. You know, Cleveland plays good defense; they play at a slow pace. I don't love the spot for either one of Giannis or Drew. You know, Giannis is always a guy that you can pay up for. He has such a high floor, such a high ceiling. This just doesn't feel like the matchup where I really want to go out of my way to play Giannis. Um, but I assume his ownership will be very, very low. So he's a fine tournament play. Drew is okay, but I don't love him on the slate. The rest of Milwaukee, I'm pretty much off of. I don't really like anything else here. And then on the other side with the Cavs, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like, the Bucks are not a team I like to target too much. They're, they're a good defensive team. Donovan Mitchell in this matchup, I don't love. Darius Garland at 7,800 is like okay, but I don't love him. Um, Evan Mobley at 6,900, just, you know, it feels like a reasonable price tag for him. Jared Allen's kind of cheap at 6,600, but this is not the best matchup. You know, the Bucks are, again, really good defensively. They, they protect the paint really well. I know Allen had a really good uh, game last game, but that was a really good matchup against the Jazz. This is obviously not nearly as good of a spot. So, man, like, even though this should be a fun game to watch, I just really don't see much I like for, you know, DFS at least. Favorite play in this game would probably be Giannis, and I just think, you know, that's just because it's Giannis, and he can put up a huge game any night, but this just doesn't feel like the spot where I really, you know, want to be attacking this game too heavily, so I think we can go ahead and move on to the next one, talk about Detroit and Philadelphia, uh, so Detroit, they're on a back-to-back -back today, we'll, you know, have to monitor their injury report, but I think for the most part, every one of those guys, you know, should be playing. Looking at Detroit here, I mean, Detroit's not a team on an 11-game slate I really want to get much exposure to. The one guy that I think I could get down for would be Jalen Duran, and you know, Jalen Duran was a pretty solid value on Tuesday night, had a good game. Um, I think he finished with like over 30 drafting points. He had a big double-double. I worry about foul trouble here going up against MB. Like this is definitely a spot where I think Duran could get into foul trouble, but he's been starting and playing good minutes lately. And as long as he does avoid foul trouble, I think he will play like low to mid thirties minutes. He's still cheap at 4,700. Obviously risky spot going up against MB, but you know, Duran at 4,700. I think if I was going to play anyone on the Pistons, he would probably be my favorite play. And then on the Philadelphia side, so obviously a good spot here. The Pistons are a really bad defensive team. So definitely, you know, Joel Embiid, James Harden both offer plenty of upside in this matchup. Embiid's 11,500. I'm fine paying up for Embiid today. I don't have an issue with him. Um, I don't know if he's going to be a guy that I really like prioritize on this slate, but matchup strong. If Detroit can keep this game close to where Embiid plays his full minutes, he has plenty of upside here. Strong matchup for James Harden as well. We've seen you know, guards do really well against Detroit this season, point guard specifically. Harden's had, you know, two disappointing games lately, but I think this is definitely a bounce back spot for him against a, you know, bad Pistons team. So, interest in Harden too. Pretty much it though for Philadelphia. Don't see too too much else I really like on the Sixers for today. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next game, talk about the Celtics and the uh, and the Pacers. So, for the Celtics today, I don't really like too much here either. Um, you know, Jason Tatum is 11K, Jalen Brown is 9,400. Those price tags feel about right. I think this is a pretty good spot. The Pacers have been playing at a pretty fast pace this season, but 
at the prices uh, you know Tatum and Brown are at, I don't think either one are priority plays. I think they're just kind of like tournament options. Marcus Smart, I believe, is questionable. He is questionable, so this will be something to monitor. If Smart does get ruled out, that's a you know, small, small boost for Tatum, small, small boost for, for Brown. I think the guys we probably would want to go to, though, if Smart got ruled out would be Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White. Uh, Brogdon probably would come off the bench still, but he would play really good minutes. He's cheap at 5,100. Um, also, it's a revenge game, too. So I'd be interested in Malcolm Brogdon um, if Smart gets ruled out. I'd be interested in Derek White, too. Derek White's really cheap, 3,900. I'd assume if Smart does not play, you'll see White start at point guard, play about 25, 30 minutes. At this price tag, he would definitely be in play for value. So I think those would be the guys I'd be most interested in from Boston. Um, Robert Williams is really cheap. He's only played, I believe, one game since he's come back from injury. Two games, actually. He's played 18 minutes in both games, so until we see him start to play more minutes, I know he's really cheap, but he's not really going to be a guy that's viable in DFS until his minutes get up there. Um, but, you know, Rob Williams is a really good permanent producer. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a good game in, like, 20 minutes, but wouldn't go there on a you know, 11-game slate. And then on the other side with Indiana, it's Really tough spot here for the Pacers. Um, you know, the Celtics are a good defensive team. I don't really like much on Indiana. Halliburton in this matchup, I'll probably just avoid. He's 9,600 as well, so you're not really getting much of a discount on him. Definitely not the best spot for Miles Turner, especially with Robert Williams back. I think the, the Celtics interior defense is going to be much stronger. I mean, I'm fine just like full fading Indiana today. I mean, these first few games, honestly, like these first few games are not that appealing. Um, so I think we can go ahead and move on to the next one, talk about Toronto and the Knicks. So... Uh, Knicks, they're another team on a back-to-back. -back. They did play Tuesday. However, they did blow out the uh, the Warriors. So would assume everyone for the Knicks is good to go for today, even on a back-to-back. -back. Yeah, with the Knicks, you, you can expect really big minutes for, for Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett. Don't love this matchup against Toronto, but these guys are going to play so many minutes that they all offer some upside. Um, do, do any of them stand out on this slate? I don't really think so, but if you want to go to Randle or Brunson or, or Barrett in tournaments as like a low on dart throw, I don't hate it. On the Toronto side, it's like it's kind of the same thing. We know Siakam, Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, OG are going to play huge minutes, but they're all priced correctly. Um, I don't really like much from the Raptors today, and I feel like, man, I feel like I haven't liked anything so far yet on the slate, but these first few games are just really not that appealing. Um, Siakam's got upside, but he's 10,400. It's also not the best matchup either. Fred Van Vliet's been playing better lately, but now that OG's back and with his price tag being at 8,300, I don't really have much interest in Van Vliet. Scotty Barnes has been a complete roller coaster this season. You never know what you're going to get from him. I don't think I'm going to go to him on this slate. OG, in his first game back, played 40 minutes. Um, wasn't very productive, but like he's going to play huge minutes. Uh, all these guys are. At their price tags, though, I don't think really any of them stand out. And you know the rest of the Raptors, I'm probably not going to go to. I know Gary Trent's questionable. If he gets ruled out, you probably would see like maybe... Maybe Wancho Hernan Gomez start. I think he's been starting the last few games, but like I'm not super interested in him. It's just, yeah, don't see much here. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next game. I think we're going to start to get to some more appealing games you know, when we get later down the road. But for this one, we got Chicago and Atlanta. So looking at Atlanta today, you know, DeJounte Murray is back. He returned last game, uh, but Clint Capella is still out. John Collins also returned last game. You know, Looking at the Hawks, you got Trey Young at 10,200. You got DeJounte at 8,600. Trey on this slate, I'm not like super interested in. This price tag feels about right. He did have a huge game last game with DeJounte back. I mean, go figure. Like Trey, when DeJounte was out, was putting up, you know, 31, 51, 42, 46, 46. And then DeJounte comes back and Trey puts up 61. Like that. We were expecting the 61 point games from Trey with DeJounte out. But even though he had a huge game last game, I'm not really going to chase that on this slate. I think there's just other guys I'd rather pay up for that we'll talk about later. DeJounte, he you know, did play his full minutes last game. He wasn't super productive. He only had 30 drafting points, but he did play 38 minutes. So that was at least good to see. I think we are going to get full minutes from DeJounte here. We know he's a good permanent producer. This price tag is not that high. Like 8,600 is kind of cheap for DeJounte. So if I had to play anyone on Atlanta, I think it would be him. Um, but like Bogdan has been starting lately. And I think he, he still started last game. And like with Bogdan back and playing more minutes, that's definitely taking away usage from guys like Trey and DeJounte. Um, but I'm not interested in Bogdan. They actually started John Collins at center last game. Now, he only played 20 minutes, but he was really productive in those 20 minutes. I'd kind of be interested in John Collins today if they start him at center again, um, just because he his permanent production is better when he plays at the five. Um, but obviously, it's a little concerning that he only played 20 minutes in his first game back. Clearly, you know, he might not be like fully, fully healthy. Um, maybe we'll get you know some sort of update like on his minutes limit. And then like DeAndre Hunter, I'm not on. And you know the rest of these Atlanta guys, I'm not really interested in. And then on the other side with Chicago. So it's a back-to-back -back for Chicago. Definitely need to pay attention to their injury report. But I think we can expect everyone to play here. 
You know, DeRozan at 8,500, probably my favorite of the Bulls guys if I had to pick someone on Chicago. Um, it probably would be either him or Vooch. DeRozan's been consistent this season, pretty solid, but, you know, not a guy that I really feel like I ever have to play, especially on an 11-game slate. I think, you know, really the only times I've played DeRozan this season has been when, like, Levine's been out. Um, other than that, I really haven't played DeRozan much at all. And he's had some good games, but he's also just kind of been, like, mediocre. Um, in the $8,500 salary, I mean, you're kind of hoping for, like, 50-plus, you know, 55 from DeRozan. Last time he played Atlanta, he did have a massive game, 63 DK points. I think that game did go to overtime. I'm okay with DeRozan, but not a priority play today. Vooch at 7,100, I think's fine. Um, without Clint Capella going up against John Collins, I think it's a slightly better matchup for Vooch. Vooch is a guy, another guy that I really haven't played much this season, but I think at this price tag, he's someone I'm kind of interested in for today. Rest of the Bulls, though, pretty much off of. Um, so I think we can go ahead and move on to the next game, talk about the Warriors and the Nets. So this is one we're going to have to spend some time on. We'll start off with, on the Warriors side. So the Warriors... They are on a back-to-back -to -back today. They already said that Klay Thompson is not going to play. Uh, Andrew Wiggins is doubtful. And then Dante DiVincenzo uh, got ruled out unexpectedly on Tuesday. We'll have to see if he plays here. We don't really have any word yet on him. Draymond Green, they, they didn't say whether he was going to play or not. It is a back-to-back, -back and you know, sometimes you have to worry about Draymond playing on back-to-backs. But for now, I think we can expect Steph, Klay, Wiggins to be out. I think it's a good chance DiVincenzo will be out too, so... There's going to be some value to go to here. Obviously, Jordan Poole, we'll start off with him. I mean, he's going to have a massive, massive usage uh, usage rate. He was not very good Tuesday night against the Knicks, but they also got blown out, so really, really didn't play his full minutes. Against Brooklyn here, if they can keep this game close, I mean, Jordan Poole is going to be a big reason why. So even though he busted on Tuesday night, I'd be fine going back to Jordan Poole today. I think he's definitely in play. His usage rate is going to be even higher with Clay off the floor. Draymond, I mean... He's just been such a tough guy to play in DFS this season. He was pretty disappointing on Tuesday night. Um, he, he had like, what, like 23 DraftKings points or something. Um, he didn't really play his full minutes, but just not a guy that has really shown much upside. And even with a lot of guys out, like I don't know if it even benefits Draymond just because Draymond, he's, he's just so scared to shoot the ball. And it's really hard for him to put up big games when he just doesn't shoot. I mean, he can have games where he gets like 12 rebounds and 13 assists and two steals and four blocks, but... I know he had 17 points against Toronto. Those games like just feel outlier for him. I mean, you're you're hoping he scores double digit points at this point for with Draymond. Like he's just not a guy that really is going to be out there for scoring. He's out there to facilitate and to run the offense and just you know kind of get guys in position. So even at 6K with a lot of guys out, like I don't really have a ton of interest in Draymond. Um, Looney at 5400. Like I don't know if his role really changes. I think Kaminga is going to be a good value to go to here. I assume he probably will start, but. We'll definitely have to pay attention to the Warriors starting lineup. They did start Anthony Lamb on Tuesday, uh, but now that they're without Clay, we could you know, we're gonna have to see if someone else start in place of a in place of Clay. So if like Kaminga winds up starting, I think at 5K he is someone that I'm definitely interested in for value. Uh, like I said, um, or excuse me, not Anthony Lamb, but uh, Moses Moody started on Tuesday. So Moses Moody, I'm assuming would start again today. He's only 3,300. He's definitely in play for value. And then yeah, we'll have to wait and see like the Warriors starting lineup. I think for now we can expect Poole, Looney, Draymond to be in there. Um, could, if DiVincenzo plays, I assume he would start. Kaminga might start. Um, Moody might start. So a couple of guys you could consider here for value. Even like a Ty Jerome might would start. Um, but I think that's it for Golden State. I don't really see too much else I, I like here. So let's go ahead and move on to the other side of this game with Brooklyn. So for uh, Brooklyn, you got Kevin Durant at 80, or 10,500. You got Kyrie at 8,800. You know, both KD and Kyrie here, they're okay. Um, KD's price tag doesn't make him like a standout play. He'll probably run into the tougher matchup. He'll probably be guarded by Draymond, but I mean, KD's matchup proof. He can win in any matchup, so I think KD's fine. Between the two, though, I do prefer Kyrie for cheaper. I think it's a better matchup for Kyrie. I mean, when you think about the Golden, like Golden State here, if, if DiVincenzo plays, I guess DiVincenzo would guard Kyrie, but if DiVincenzo doesn't play, it'll probably be like Moses Moody or maybe like Kaminga who guards Kyrie. I don't really know. 8,800 for Kyrie, though, looks kind of appealing. I'm a little bit interested in him. He's probably my favorite play on Brooklyn. The rest of Brooklyn, though, like Ben Simmons, I'm not super interested in. Hasn't really been getting full minutes lately. His production hasn't been the best either. Probably just going to pass on him. Probably going to pass on Claxton. Don't really see anything else I like on Brooklyn. So that, that'll do it for that game. Um, we can go ahead and move on to the next one, uh, Portland and OKC. So Portland today got some injuries to keep an eye on here. I think Damian Lillard is probable, so he's expected to play. Uh, I think Jeremy Grant is uh, probable as well. Yusuf Nurkic did not play last game, and he is questionable once again. So this will be something to monitor, and I do believe Josh Hart's probable as well. He is. So expecting you know Lillard, Grant, 
hard to play. Nurkic, on the other hand, we don't really know yet. Um, obviously, last game without Nurkic, we saw Drew Eubanks get the start. Um, Drew Eubanks um, played 32 minutes, put up 26 DraftKings points. Even though his price tag came up to 4,200, I think if Drew Eubanks were to start again, he'd be in a really good value play. Um, he'd be someone that I'm definitely interested in. Obviously, this is a really good matchup against a you know, Thunder team that has really struggled defending bigs this season. But like Dame at 10,600, not super interested in at that price tag. Simons and Grant, I don't really love. Same with Hart. I think Hart gets a little bit of a boost without Nurkic. His rebounding numbers definitely spike up. He's, he got eight rebounds last game, had eight rebounds, six assists, 13 points. I mean, at 5,600, like, I think Hart's okay option. Um, I'd have a, have a little bit more interest in him if, if Nurkic got ruled out. If Nurkic plays, I have a lot of interest in him just because it is such a good matchup against OKC. We've seen centers do so well against the Thunder this season. Um, obviously, Nurkic is questionable, so this will be something we have to keep an eye on. But if he does play, um, he would be very appealing for GBPs because I don't think a lot of people would go there, especially if this news doesn't come out to, like, you know, well after lock or something. So um, right now, you know, Favorite play on Portland, it, probably favorite play on Portland is Nurkic. If he plays, if he doesn't play, then my favorite play would probably be uh, you know, Drew Eubanks. But I have some interest in Hart as well. Simons, Grant, Lillard, at their price tags, I don't love on this slate. And then on the other side with OKC, so once again, no Josh Giddy for OKC. We can expect a big role for SGA. Last game, played 36 minutes, took 24 shots, had 52 DraftKings points. Price tags you know, came up a little bit to 10100 but I still think SGA looks like a Pretty decent payup option if you want to go there. I have no issue with him. Um, the rest of OKC though, I'm not super interested in. I think Dort takes a little bit of a hit. Um, you know, with Giddy or excuse me, with uh, SGA playing, we saw him have a really big game when SGA and Giddy were both out. But with SGA back last game, you know, obviously not the best game from from Dort. The the value from OKC like Jalen Williams and Poku and these guys like I'm just not going to go to. Jalen Williams played 33 minutes last game, was fa fairly productive, but I feel like on an 11 game slate, we're just going to have better value available. Maybe if value doesn't open up, then you could consider Jalen Williams, but I have a feeling you know, there will be better value. Poku, his minutes have just been all over the place. Played 23 minutes last game. Seems like they're keeping him like in the low 20s. Not super appealing to me. So I think that'll do it for, uh, for, that, for that game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, um, Dallas and Minnesota. So we just saw these teams play a couple days ago. A lot of teams are playing again, like with Portland and OKC played a couple days ago. But starting off with Dallas, you got Luka. Coming in at 12,600. Obviously, Luka you know, got ejected last game, did not play his full minutes. He wasn't having like the best game. Um, like Towards the end of the third quarter, he had you know 38 drafting points. So he was kind of struggling a little bit. And I think this is definitely a tougher matchup for him going up against Jaden McDaniels, who's been a really strong defender this season. But Luka is matchup proof. I have no issue paying up for Luka today. But right now, he's not really like a priority play. We'll have to wait and see like what kind of value we get if you know any value opens up on this slate. And then the rest of Dallas, so we've seen Christian Wood start lately, and it seems like they're going to keep him in the starting lineup. His price tag is at 8100 now, so I think, you know, at that price tag, Wood doesn't look like a, a priority option, but now that he is starting, I think there is more upside for Christian Wood just because he is a, you know, productive permitted producer. His, his minutes have been a lot higher lately, but the price tag doesn't make him really stand out. Rest of Dallas, Dinwiddie, Kim, you know, none of these other guys really stand out. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith is out today, but I don't know if that really changes much. I don't know who would start for Dorian Finney-Smith, probably like Reggie Bullock or something, but yeah, you know, these guys aren't going to really be DFS viable. And then on the other side with Minnesota, so we've got some injury news to keep an eye on for Minnesota. Rudy Gobert, Kyle Anderson were both out last game. I believe both are questionable for today. Gobert is questionable and Anderson is questionable as well. So, you know, starting off with Anthony Edwards at uh, 9,500, not super interested in Anthony Edwards here. He did have a really huge game against Dallas last game and you know, Dorian Finney-Smith is out today, so that's beneficial for Edwards. The price tag, though, at 9500 doesn't make him like a standout play, um, but I think he does get a little bit of a boost if, you know, Kyle Anderson and Gobert are out again. Still don't know if I would be, like, running to roster Edwards, though, at this price tag. And then you've got D'Angelo Russell at 7500 Not super interested in Russell. He had a pretty bad game last game. He's just, he's been solid this season, especially as of late without Cat, you know, without Gobert. He's been solid, but the price tag doesn't make him like a standout play on, a, you know, 11-game slate. But these other guys I want to talk about. So Naz Reed's 5,900. He's obviously been starting lately in place of Rudy Gobert. OKC game, he started, played 37 minutes, had 51 DK points. Last game, he played 40 minutes, had 52 DK points. The game against the Bulls, he got injured in. Um, so obviously don't want to look too much into that one. But the two full games that he has started in place of Gobert, Naz Reed has been amazing. Um, and even at 5,900, I think Naz Reed still looks like a pretty good play today if Rudy Gobert is out. Like I think Naz Reed should be like a almost a 7K player when he's starting and playing this many minutes. So at 5,900, I am very interested in Nats Reed once again if Gobert gets ruled out. 
Kyle Anderson, if he plays, I'm not super interested in. If he gets ruled out, I think that's a little bit of a boost to Jaden McDaniels. McDaniels played 37 minutes last game. I think they're going to want him out there as much as he can be out there to guard Luka. So minutes should be strong for McDaniels, but I'd, I'd feel better about him if you know Gobert and uh, Anderson got ruled out. But I think that'll do it for Minnesota. Rivers started last game, but you know not really interested in him. Um, just kind of have to wait and see here with the Gobert and uh, Kyle Anderson news. If they play, don't love much on Minnesota. If they're out, I think, you know, Edwards gets a boost. I think Naz Reed's a really good play. I'd be interested in McDaniels for value, and that'll you know probably do it for Minnesota. So moving on to the next game, Orlando and Houston. So looking at Houston today, you know, don't don't love a ton on the Rockets here. You got Jalen Green at 7,200. You got KPJ at 7,100. I think at their price tags, both are like viable options, but neither one stand out as priority plays. I will say though, this is definitely a spot we can expect these guys to play their full minutes. Yeah, you know, with the Rockets, they're 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 not the best team, so they're going to get blown out a lot. But going up against a bad Magic team, this should be a game that does stay competitive. So we should see you know, 35, 36 minutes from Jalen Green, and at 7,200, he's got upside to pay off that price tag. Same goes for KPJ at 7,100. Both these guys had really good games against the Magic earlier this season. Wouldn't be surprised if one of them does well here. Uh, between the two, they got slightly prefer KPJ, but I think they're both in play. Shingun at 5,700. Don't love in this spot against Orlando. You know, Shingun has not been playing like huge minutes lately. Even in competitive games, he's only playing like 28, 30 minutes, which just really caps his ceiling. So not a guy that I'm really that interested in. The rest of Houston, I'm probably just kind of off of. And then on the other side with Orlando, I think Paolo Bencaro at 8K is definitely in play here. Good spot against Houston. Houston, not the best defensive team. Their defense has been a little bit better this season, but I think I think it's still a spot we can look to attack. The price tag on Bencaro feels about right at 8K, but... In this matchup, I think that he does have the upside to pay off this price tag. Uh, Franz Wagner, I believe, is questionable, so this will be something to monitor. We could obviously expect a you know a bigger role for Ben Caro if Wagner got to, uh, got ruled out. I think it also would benefit guys like Markel Fultz. So Markel Fultz at 5700, really good matchup for him. Um, he's had some good games lately. Had a really big game against Atlanta. I would definitely be a lot more interested in Fultz today if um, Franz Wagner got ruled out. I think even if Franz Wagner plays, Fultz is like an okay option. Point guards against the Rockets has been a you know, really good matchup to target. Um, so I think it's a good spot for Fultz, but I definitely would like him more you know, if Wagner got ruled out. But the rest of these guys, like you know, Mo Wagner and Bol Bol and Cole Anthony, like none of these other guys stand out from Orlando. Um, so I think that'll do it for that game. we got two more to go over the two late night games, Lakers and the Kings. So this is one another one where I think there's going to be a lot to like. We'll start off with the Lakers. Obviously, no Anthony Davis. Um, Russell Westbrook is questionable, so that'll be some big news to keep an eye on. LeBron's probable. He's expected to play. Um, and I think Austin Reeves, I saw, was doubtful. So with Ru uh, with Westbrook questionable and with AD out, I mean, if Westbrook gets ruled out here, like we can expect a massive, massive role for LeBron. Um, regardless, he's going to have a really big role without Anthony Davis. Last game, he was really good without AD. Played, 50, or played 37 minutes, put up 57 DraftKings points. Good matchup here against a bad Kings defense, a Kings team that does play at a fast pace. I think of all the games on this slate, this should definitely be one of the most you know, high-scoring games, this Lakers-Kings game. So very interesting LeBron today made him the cover boy. I think he's a, a really good payoff option. I think the $9,900 salary is definitely too cheap for him. And then you know Westbrook, if he plays, I think it's okay at $7,400. His upside's obviously a little bit higher without AD. I think the price tag feels about right on Westbrook, but good matchup for him. He would be playable in my opinion. And then Thomas Bryant has been starting lately in place of AD. He's been pretty productive as a starter. 33 minutes against Washington. Last game in a blowout, played 26 minutes. Been averaging about a fancy point per minute. And I think as long as this game is close and he's not in foul trouble, we can expect probably 30, 32 minutes from Thomas Bryant. Price tag came up to 5,300, but I still think at 5,300, he looks like a decent option. So I'm still interested in Thomas Bryant today. Um, and then, the, you know, Dennis Schroeder had a really big game last game. I think he obviously benefited without Westbrook and without LeBron. With LeBron back, with Westbrook maybe playing as well, I'm not as interested in Schroeder, but I think Schroeder definitely is going to have a bigger role while Anthony Davis is out. But the $4,700 salary doesn't make him a standout play today. Um, the rest of the Lakers, not interested in anyone else on this team. And then on the other side with Sacramento, big news to keep an eye on here is Demontis Sabonis, who is currently questionable. I think Sabonis, I think he's played in every game this season, um, if I'm pretty sure. So this will be the potentially the first game that he would miss. Don't know who would start in place of Sabonis. Um... I think it would be Chimisei Metu. I think he's the guy they've kind of been using as like the backup center. Um, so I think Metu, he's really cheap, I'd assume. Um, he's got to be like minimum salary or close to that. Where is he at? Let's see. 
did I skip over him? Oh, he's, so yeah, he's minimum salary, 3K. So like Metsu, I think would probably be the guy that would get the minutes. Um, but like last game he didn't play. So who, who's even been getting the backup center minutes behind? Let me see. I want to see who's been getting the backup center minutes for the for the Kings. It hasn't been Rashawn Holmes. He hasn't been playing. Um, Trey Lyles maybe. So Trey Lyles got five minutes last game. Um, they've just been playing like they've been playing him a ton. They've been playing uh, Sabonis a ton. You know, you got seven minutes from from Namias Quita. Uh, Alex Lynn, I don't think, got any... He didn't get in play in time. No, he hasn't played forever. So, don't know who would start in place of Sabonis. Um, that'll be something we'll have to keep an eye on. I mean, all those guys are cheap that I mentioned. You know, who had, Rashawn Holmes, Trey Lyles, like, whoever it is, they're all, like, minimum salary. So, you just kind of, you know, would just have you know, a placeholder and just be ready to swap whoever starts. But if Sabonis does get ruled out, there would definitely be value to go to from the Kings. Whoever would start, I'd have interested in. And then we could expect a much bigger role for De'Aaron Fox. Obviously, Fox... Looks like a pretty good play. You know, even at 8,700, I'm kind of interested in him in a good matchup against a you know, fast-paced Lakers team. He would have to take on an even bigger role if Sabonis got ruled out. So I'm very interested in De'Aaron Fox. I would like him even more if Sabonis got ruled out. The rest of these guys, like Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, like I think they're playable if Sabonis is out. I do want to mention that Harrison Barnes is questionable as well. So if he got ruled out, don't know who would start in place of him. They could start Malik Monk, but I think they want to keep Malik Monk off the bench. So, like, maybe it'll be, like, Terrence Davis. Terrence Davis, like, if Harrison Barnes gets ruled out, I think Terrence Davis is probably the most likely guy to start. He's only 4K, would be a pretty good value play, too. So, there's definitely going to be some plays to like in this game, you know, especially if some of these guys get ruled out, like a Sabonis, like a Westbrook. And then, like, Sabonis, if he plays, I'm very interested in him. I mean, Sabonis has just been on another level lately. You look at his game log, 59, 55, 71 DK points. Without Anthony Davis, I think this is definitely a Lakers team we can look to attack with opposing centers. Um, and I think Sabonis had a pretty good game against the Lakers earlier this year. He put up 45 DK points in 31 minutes. As long as he avoids foul trouble, the minutes are going to be there. He's been playing huge minutes as of late. So if Sabonis plays, I think he's a really good GPP play. I assume his ownership would be you know, pretty low, especially if we don't get news on him until like well after lock. But that'll do it for that game. We can go ahead and talk about the last game on the night, the the Clippers and the uh, and the Hornets. So starting off with the Clippers, we got Paul George, who I believe is questionable for today. He is questionable, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. We've seen Kawhi Leonard start to really get up there in terms of minutes. He's finally gotten over the 30-minute uh, threshold, 31 and 32 minutes the last two games. 7,900, I think I'm finally like down to play Kawhi today if Paul George gets ruled out. Now, if, Kawhi, or if uh, Paul George plays, I'm not like super interested in Kawhi at the salary, but the production has started to get better for Kawhi. The, the, you know, per minute, his per minute production has been great. He's been taking a lot of shots. His minutes have been starting to get up there as well. So I think Kawhi's starting to get to a point where he's now DFS viable. Obviously, if Paul George gets ruled out, we could expect a you know, really big role for Kawhi. If Paul George plays, I'm not super interested in him you know, or Kawhi at their salaries. John Wall, 6,200, not super interested in Marcus Morris. Like, I don't think any of these other guys are going to really be playable. Um, but you know, Reggie Jackson, I believe, is questionable. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. If Reggie Jackson gets ruled out, then maybe we could consider John Wall. Um, Avika Zubak, I believe, is questionable as well. This will be something to monitor because obviously this is a really good matchup against the Hornets, a team we've looked to attack with centers this season. I think if Zubak plays, he's a really interesting GPP play at only 5,200. This is definitely a cheap price tag for him. If Zubak gets ruled out, I assume we would either see Moses Brown or um, Diabite start at center. Um, I think he, so it looks like he got, he got assigned to the G League, so that probably means that Zubak's going to play today. But we could see, if Zubak does get ruled out, we could see Moses Brown start. I think Moses Brown's really cheap. He's 3,700. He'd be a good value. Um, obviously, a really, really good matchup. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in, you know, whoever starts at center for the Clippers, I think is, you know, going to be a good play. But that's probably it for the Clippers. I don't see too much else I like here. Really just got to wait on news for this team. You know, with Kawhi, Reggie Jackson, or excuse me, with a PG, Reggie Jackson, Zubak questionable. Um, I think Norman Powell's questionable too. We'll have to monitor some news here. Right now, you know, favorite play. From the Clippers is probably Zubak if he plays, but if Paul George gets ruled out, I do really like Kawhi, and that's probably it. And then on the other side with the with the Hornets, so Lamelo Ball at 8900, don't love the spot for him, but man, he's gonna have a really big role here. He's gonna play sh pretty good minutes, I'd assume. He only played 27 minutes last game, but that was a game that he got in foul trouble in. Price tag's up to 8900. That feels like an appropriate price tag for Lamelo, but I believe Terry Rozier is doubtful for today. Terry Rozier did not play last game. Again, we can expect a big role for LaMelo without Rozier. So still interested in LaMelo, even at 8,900. Kelly Oubre at 7,700 feels priced about right. He obviously is going to play a, a ton of minutes without Rozier. He's going to start, but the price tag feels you know appropriate for him. 
Gordon Hayward, I think it's 6,200. Feels priced about right, but I think his upside's a little bit higher without Rozier. He's been playing big minutes lately. Seems to be fully healthy now. So I'm okay Gordon, uh, going to Gordon Hayward at 6,200. But the rest of uh, Charlotte, Plumlee, P.J. Washington, none of these other guys stand out to me. I think it's really just like LaMelo and, and maybe Oubre, maybe Hayward. That's probably it from the Hornets. So that'll do it, guys, for this 11-game Wednesday slate. Uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. As always, if you enjoy Hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, if you guys are new to the channel, check out Price Picks, sponsor of the video. You guys can sign up for Price Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Make sure to check them out if you guys have not yet. And as always, I should have a Price Picks video posted for today. Sometime, probably on Wednesday afternoon, I'll have a video posted on YouTube sharing some plays I like for Price Picks today. Check that video out if you are interested. But good luck tonight, guys. Thanks as always for watching the video. Hopefully you guys all win some money tonight and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.